Hello there and welcome to Working Stress Free. In this video I'm going to explore the subject of where to put all of your attention, where to focus your resources in order to give you the best results for minimum effort. Um, when it comes to stress management there are a couple of areas that you can be exploring. Um, in the first video I talked about business being like a bucket where people put money in but there are two holes at the bottom of the bucket and those two holes are made up of policies and procedures, the way you do what you do, your working practices. And the other whole is to do with mindsets, to do the way people think and how they process and how they cope and whether they're resilient or not. And there's only so much money to be spent on coaching, training, changing the way you work. And so it's important to make sure that whatever resources, time, effort, money you're putting into the work that you do, that you get the best result for it. And that means deciding which of those two areas you're going to focus on primarily. And it, by the way, it's not a case of excluding one. It's not a case of just putting all the efforts into mindset and uh, ignoring policies and procedures. It's about looking at what can you do where you get the biggest, the best maximum return, minimum effort. Uh, I don't know if you adhere to the Pareto principle as I do, where 20% of the work we do gives 80% of the results. So that's really where I'm coming from with, with this video helping you to explore and look at which of those two areas is it worth putting the work into. And to do that, I'm going to take two perspectives. The first perspective I'm going to have is looking at this, this conversation from the mindset of uh, a business owner, an entrepreneur, an HR director. And the other perspective is looking at it from the perspective and the mindset of a coach, a stress management coach. So let's have a look at these two options so we can decide which of the two it's worth you focusing on first and foremost. So let's begin by looking through the perceptual filters of an entrepreneur, a business owner, HR director, managing director. You will be looking at your business and looking for ways to help your people and your company to be more efficient and more effective. Now, I'm an entrepreneur and before I became a coach, a stress management coach back in 2012, I did my duty of care. I googled the hell out of the subject of stress management and it brought to light a couple of things. Um, one of the first things I noticed was that most people were directed towards looking at the HSE, the Health and Safety Executives website where it's all about policies and procedures. So the natural tendency is to look at the working practices. However, as I said in the first video, if we look at some of the results that people are getting, and of course people are getting some good results, but generally stress statistics haven't changed ever since the policies and procedures, the management standards were brought in in 2007. So something's not working. It's kind of like everyone's heading east looking for a sunset. So rather than you just putting all your efforts into doing what seems to be natural and getting poor results, uh, let's explore why maybe looking at policies and procedures isn't the first place to look. And I'm going to give you an example, a personal experience. Before I became a coach, as I said, I was an entrepreneur and I had a number of businesses. I was director of one of the largest demolition, if not the largest demolitions company in the country. We were taking down large engineering projects, motorway bridges, grandstands, stadiums, power stations, shopping centers. And I had a chain of mobile phone and computer shops. It was in the early days of the IT and the internet. Uh, I owned a couple of retail outlets, including a wine bar and restaurant. And I also owned a business center, which was an IT training center. I was really stressed. In fact, I was, it's what got me into coaching because I wasn't coping at all. And I'd wake up in the morning, two, three o'clock in the morning, sweating and you know worrying about all the things that were going on, especially some of the big engineering projects where we could earn a lot of money over a weekend taking them down a, down a motorway bridge. But there were lots of penalties, so everything had to be right. So in terms of working practices, I was pretty much on the ball with it, but I was still really, really stressed. And then I had an experience. I watched a program and it led me to reading a book and... It gave me an experience of thinking about something that had been worrying me, but thinking about it in a different way so I could still think about it, but I wasn't getting any of the emotions. And it opened up my mind to a whole area that I wasn't even aware of, which was to do with mindset. Now, over the six months that followed that, watching the TV program and reading the book, I did some training and I was no longer stressed. 
Now, nothing externally had changed. I hadn't changed any of my working practices. I hadn't put in place new time management or project management procedures. So the policies and the procedures that I was using hadn't changed at all. But my mindset had, and the experience was completely different. This is why I'd like you to sit with this as a concept. Everyone goes for policies and procedures. It makes sense. But it's mindset that really makes the difference, and I'm going to explain why. So let's look at this subject from a detached coaching perspective now. Imagine there are two teachers. Okay, The teaching profession is widely regarded as being one of the most stressful pr professions. So we have so many people having literally had so much uh, with the stress of it that they're, they're, they're leaving in droves. Two teachers, similar classes, similar work demands, similar control, similar roles, similar support, relationship and change. All of the characteristics that the HSE have identified as being the causes of stress. But we've got one teacher who's stressed and we've got one teacher who's OK. So what's the difference? Well, it's got nothing to do with the work. It's got nothing to do with all of those qualities, demand, control, relationship, support, change. Because if it was, they would either both be stressed or they would both not be stressed. It's got everything to do with they have different mindsets. The person who is stressed has what we call an impoverished mindset. It doesn't mean they're not as smart as the other person. It just means that they haven't yet learned how to process and cope and to deal with the external the same way as the person who's coping is. Now, the person who's doing okay, they will probably have naturally learned how to process and how to cope. And they have an enriched mindset, normally because that's something they've just naturally learned to do. Or maybe they've had some training. This is why mindset is the key. It's never to do with external. Of course, external can be the cause, but it's how people process the external which creates the internal experience, the feelings, the emotions that we call stress. Does that make sense? This is why putting your energy and your effort into enriching people's mindset, teaching them and training them how to cope, how to be resilient, that's where you're going to get so much more return from all the time, money and effort that you're going to put into dealing with stress. Does that make sense? Now, when it comes to making any changes, and this includes whether it's personal changes or whether it's uh, business cultural changes, there are four qualities that need to be in place in order for any change to be effective. The first is awareness. Awareness that there's a problem, that something needs to change. If people don't have an awareness, well, there's no problem. Well, they certainly don't see that there's a problem, okay? Making people aware that there's a problem, making people aware of what the problem is, that's the first thing. Secondly, there has to be a willingness to address the problem. Now, I'm going to address awareness and willingness in later videos, okay? Because these are so important to making sure that any work that you do actually gets implemented and is ineffective. The third, which is really what this video is about, is what to do, the how to change. What to do is where are you putting all the work? What are you focusing on? And the fourth quality is time. Allowing time for the changes to implement and to become either best practice if you're looking at policies and procedures or new behaviors if you're looking at mindset. Okay, so those are four qualities that need to be in place. So I want to just finish off this video with making you aware of some of the areas in terms of mindset that you can be focusing on because very much like 20% gives you 80% of the results it's so easy to have you know, your energy and your time spent focusing on different areas of mindset because there's so many different ways to look at it that you could be looking at the wrong thing okay so I'm going to explore that now so where do you go in terms of mindset well, again, if you go and Google the hell out of it, you'll be sent in all different directions with everyone claiming that their approach is the approach, you know, whether that's mindfulness or CBT or NLP, whatever it might be. So I'm going to share with you my perspective as a coach, 20 years in the trenches, 
working with people who some people have had breakdowns, some people are about to have breakdowns, some traumatized, some having multiple panic attacks, some kind of just a little bit stressed. Whenever I'm working with somebody, there's no one solution to everybody that I see. It's not one discipline. It's always a multidisciplinary blended approach. Now, don't, don't get concerned. I'm not suggesting you send all your team away to study NLP, mindfulness, CBT, uh, psychosensory techniques such as EMDR, TFT, EFT or Havening. That's not what it's about. It's about learning enough, enough about mindset so that you and your people understand how they can manage their thinking and manage their emotions in a better way than they currently are. So I'm going to share with you in the last video a couple of simple techniques from some multiple disciplines. So they're not just from one place, from multiple disciplines that you can immediately implement so you really get a sense of the importance of mindset. The difference is you'll be able to, instead of just knowing the importance of mindset, you'll be able to test it out for yourself. It's like Bruce Lee said, knowing about something is one thing. If you can't do it, you don't know about it. So in the last video, I'm going to share with you some different approaches, different techniques that you'll be able to use straight away and share with your people and help you point in the right direction of some of the best solutions that are out there in terms of mindset. Now, I'm all for every single one of these disciplines, but I'm a bit of an obsessive compulsive. You know, if you've got the time and the money and you're able to influence people to be willing to engage in a course of mindfulness, fantastic. But I'm going to share with you some quicker, easier applications that will give you and your team some immediate experiences of how you can manage your mindset. So kind of wrapping this one up, I want you to really get this. You know, if you've got, imagine your time and effort and your energy is a hose and it's sprinkled out, it won't have much of an impact. If you turn it to a jet, you're going to be able to focus all your time, money and energy into the direction that's going to make the biggest difference. Definitely focus on mindset. And of course, look at policies and procedures. And it's the combination of two that's going to make the biggest difference. It will enable you to create a workplace where people are able to work stress free. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you've got any comments, questions, observations, please email me. I will reply to them all personally. And I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching again.